All right, part two of the B-minus show. What I usually do, or what I've been doing lately, is drinking beers on the show and talking about them because I love beer. As I'm wearing a hat that says, I love beer, for my podcast listeners out there. And um, I make beer as well. You can see the beer stuff in my background in the video on YouTube. Um, some of it, most of it, some dusty golf clubs and whatnot, a couple fraternity paddles and a Nick Cage poster, something I won from a white elephant gift exchange last year. Um, so yeah, part two, Bodega Head IPA from Third Street Ale Works, 7.1% alcohol, independent brewery out of Santa Rosa, California. We know you heard the story about beer and a slow boat to India, so we're not going to bore you with that again. We're going to talk about this classic West Coast IPA named after one of our founders' favorite surf spots, Bodega Head. Head. Has a big citrus and pine sea hop aroma. And a lingering hop bite. So grab a four-pack, head to the beach, and enjoy the waves. Independent Brewery, 7.1% alcohol. I gotta admit, doing the video at the same time, I'm still getting used to it as doing the podcast. I am pretty stoked that I could do this on my MacBook now um, instead of doing it on my MacBook and my desktop computer. It was getting kind of complicated. It's getting a little more simple now. It will get more streamlined and a lot easier to do over time. And this is kind of new for me to do video at the same time. But um, find me on YouTube. And that song I just played, that's something I made, a little romance ballad. Um, that's you can find me on B minus show on SoundCloud as well to get some free music that I made um, As you know, I'm a musician as well not a professional paid musician, but I've been I've been around the block with music So anyways poured this beer out pretty clear classic West Coast IPA looking beer a little tint to it kind of like a Sierra Nevada look Sierra Nevada pale ale uh, a little lighter than a torpedo I would say but looks like a pale ale. It's got like kind of a um, kind of a copper color to it. It's pretty clear, a little chill haze, a little bit of a little bit of haze to it. Nice white head. Let's give it a smell. Okay, I'm definitely getting like the piney aroma for sure. A little like tar, tar, pine tar. I get um, some citrus as well and a little bit of that grains popping out as well. So this is obviously a different yeast they used, in my opinion. I'm not smelling too much yeast. Probably fermented off very clean. Uh, probably something along the lines of a safe yellow 5 or a, a White Labs 01. Some kind of like California yeast is my guess. <laughs> anyway, and l let, me, let me give it a taste. That's good. It's um definitely has like a little bit of hop bite to it, but it's not overly hopped in my opinion. Although I do love my hoppy beers. It's got a good malt profile to it. I'm not getting a yeast taste. It's got a good kind of a hard water profile to it, but it rounds out pretty well in my opinion. This is what a West Coast IPA should taste like. It's not labeled as a West Coast IPA, but I would definitely categorize it as that. It doesn't have heavy, heavy IBUs. It's probably like 40, 50 IBUs. It's my guess, but um, something very heavily hopped is going to be like 80, 90 IBUs, and this is kind of right in the middle. It's not super hoppy, at least for me, but um, I have a lot of experience drinking hops. All right, let's go again. Get a little bit like lemon, a little bit of citrus. Overall, not bad. You know, it's a, if you're looking for a West Coast IPA, Bodega Head. I've been out to Bodega so many times. I'll tell a little story. Um, I got dive certified probably about, what, 10 years ago, something like that. And um, never actually went diving on my own. My family and I used to go to Bodega Bay on crab season opener. So we went out to crab season opener. A 12 foot inflatable dinghy, an Achilles with a 25 or 35 horsepower motor. That thing flew, it probably went about 30, 40 miles an hour, and eh, maybe like 25. I don't know, it went pretty fast, but basically I had four crab traps 
And um, that was another story. What am I talking about? One time I went out to dive. We're talking about diving because this is a surf spot. But Bodega Bay, I have a lot of memories out there. So um, my buddy Phil and I and my ex at the time were into diving. And I never dove before. I'm going to admit I had a few drinks and decided to go diving at Bodega Bay. Um, where was it? it wasn't Dillon's Beach, was it? It was Doran Park. Doran Park. So we dove out there, and there was a great white, uh, great white shark sighting the night before. Right, the day before we were supposed to dive, there's a great white. I guess it had like a seal in its mouth, right, in its jaw. And if you know Doran Park, about I think I want to say like a mile out, there's a big like kind of rocky island out there with a bunch of seals on it that just like to hang out. So that's where the great shark, great white shark was hunting. Regardless, I had a few beers looped up in my system. My buddy and Phil and I went down. My ex wasn't there at the time, but we went down diving. Um, there's a good surge, but the visibility was probably like seven feet. So you couldn't really see much in front of you. My other buddy who drove the boat, Eric, um, he was fishing. He was fishing off, you know, just throwing a line, just waiting for us to finish our dive. So basically, we just went down and couldn't really see much. But there was a lot of surge, and there's a jetty probably about a couple hundred feet away. So a little scary. Um, regardless to say, uh, maybe I had a lot of balls back then. Maybe I don't have many balls anymore. I don't know. I got a family now and stuff. But it was a pretty good dive. I didn't see anything, though. <laughs> I just saw, like I said, you can't really see much around you. But there's a little fear that maybe a great white shark's going to pick me up and take me away. Regardless, we did the dive successfully, got back in the boat, got back to the camping spot, and um, that was my first dive on my own. And I've done probably about 30 dives after that, and um, started a family, kind of had some life changes, and haven't went diving since. But I still have a lot of diving gear, and I like to go back out to Bodega. Um, one of the dives I did out there, though, in the Bodega area, I actually, um, right around the corner, Fort Ross, that's what it was. So it was about a 30 minute drive from Bodega. Just kind of loop around the bay. Um, I went with Phil and my ex and we went down and about 35, 40 feet down out of the range of most abalone divers. I saw these rocks that were probably like, I want to say 10, 15 feet, 10, 10 by 10, 15 by 15, something like that. Covered with abalone. Just rows of abalone, beautiful rows, probably about 30 abalone on one rock. Now as a diver with oxygen, you cannot pluck those out. You're supposed to be an abalone diver with your certification or your, or your card, right? You have to pay like a fee and you have to skin dive basically. Um, can't have supplemental oxygen and you can only take so many out. But I saw them and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's money right there. Not necessarily money cash, but just like a gourmet meal just waiting to be plucked off the rock. And those abalone knew they were right out of range of divers. They had to know. Or maybe people just don't dive that deep. Maybe we got lucky that day. Maybe the universe was just like, hey, look, we're going to let you see what you could have if you have very good lung capacity. All right. Well, anyways... um. Maybe I'll pick one of these up next time I go diving out in that area. I have not been out there for a while, but I would love to go back out. Check out Bodega Bay. Very beautiful area. Hopefully COVID ends soon. <laughs> I'm tired of COVID. I love it. But I'm like talking about some of this stuff. I'm like, can I still do that stuff? I don't know. It's really about the kids. I got a couple kids, young, young daughters. I'm not really trying to get them exposed to anything, so... Just going to wait it out probably till after election day. And then all of a sudden, COVID will disappear. Right? That's my joke. All right. B-minus show. Thank you very much for tuning in. I really appreciate your support. Um, that's about it.